Marites is an MLS intern at Adventist Medical Center, Iligan. The first case she encountered was from a 75-year-old patient. Three tubes of cerebrospinal fluid samples were obtained and they contained an evenly distributed visible blood and were then delivered to the laboratory for testing. After they ran the test, the CSF were found to have a WBC count of 250 microliters, glucose of 70 mg per dl, protein 150 mg per dl, and there were no organisms seen in gram staining. Its differential count contained 68% of neutrophils, 3% of monocytes, 28% of lymphocytes, and 1% of eosinophil. And there are also many macrophages containing ingested RBCs seen. As they continued doing their assessing and examining, the RNT in charge started asking them some questions. What is the most probable condition indicated by these results? I think it's cerebral hemorrhage as it has the presence of erythrophagocytosis. Well, give me two reasons for your answers because it could be because of traumatic tap. I believe traumatic tap is not an issue here. The patient's history and the even distribution of blood could be a good implication that it is from a cerebral hemorrhage. Even the ingested RBCs seen from the macrophages. Good. Then how about the elevated WBC count and protein? Are they significant? I'm not quite sure. The answer is no. They would be consistent with peripheral blood entering the CSF. Traumatic top or subarachnoid hemorrhage artificially increase the white blood cell count and protein level, thereby confounding the diagnosis. Are the percentage of the cells in the differential count of any significance? No. Like WBC count and protein, they are consistent with the percentages seen in the peripheral blood. Hmm, I see. In some cases, there are two other structures besides RBCs that might be contained in the macrophages. These are the hemocytorin granules and the hematoidin crystals. As the RBCs degenerate further, the breakdown products are seen in the phagocytic cells, which are the macrophages, as dark, granular, iron-laden hemocytorin deposits or yellow crystalline iron-free hematoidin crystals. The formation of these hemocytorin deposits and hematoidin crystals occurs approximately 18 hours following a subarachnoid hemorrhage. The hemocytorin deposits, hematoidin crystals, and cytrophages may be present in the CSF for several months. Interesting. Mm. Is traumatic tap the reason if there is an unevenly distributed blood even if its RBCs are nucleated and capillary structures were seen instead of macrophages? Well, if that is the case, a traumatic tap might have happened, not a hemorrhage. Oh, I see. Thank you. This sure have been a help for us. No problem. There is nothing wrong about asking questions. As Albert Einstein said, learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop from questioning.